Hello, it's uh, Andy from PCR Global bringing another video from our Real Risk Management Ground Truth series. So I've been challenged by some of our guys because they think that I talk a lot to try and keep the videos, a series of videos, to around, around three, three and a half minutes. And they also wanted me to walk and talk at the same time. Now I've been walking for a long time, I've been talking for a, t for a long time and doing the same for about 46 years. But it is quite difficult actually when you're trying to talk to the camera with the subject. So that's the challenge. Around the, th around the three minutes mark, walk and talk about certain subjects. So before you do anything, obviously, on a, on a country lane like this, you should check around you to make everything safe and secure. But I suppose also just to check that nobody's videoing you and uploading this onto YouTube or Facebook to make you look a little bit strange talking to a camera. Okay, so what's the subject? I've now got about three minutes. What I'll do as well, talk about the subject, if I find it sort of worthwhile. When I get back to the house, I'll also do some screen sharing with, with, the, with the information as well. So I'm going to talk to you about policies and I need to walk. Okay, so policies, health and safety policies, security policies, environmental or quality, they're all policies. Certain times they're attached to regulation and law, especially in the UK. Uh, the mainly recognisable one would be the health and safety at work policies. Let's talk about that. That policy is uh, required in two areas to be written down. So it's in the Health and Safety at Work Act, Section 2.3, I believe, and in the Management of Health and Safety at Work Regulations, Regulation 5. So the Management of the, the Health and Safety at Work Act says, except in such cases where may be subscribed, you must basically document and record your policies if you've got if uh, you've got five or more and that links back to the regulation five in the management regs in the management regs you've got five one and five two and five one that's an important one because in there it says poc mister another mnemonic what does that mean poc mister you must plan organize control monitor and review your health and safety arrangements and then five two says where you've got five or more employees those arrangements must be written down that's the important part here where does that go wrong for health and safety? Well, a number of consultancies will bring you a massive, I've got to stop for a minute, really thick policy. The problem with that is that uh, that manual that they've got with loads and loads of documentation, half the time you haven't got time to read that. So you will see a lot of prosecutions against the management of health and safety at work regs, plan, organise, monitor and review, where people haven't actually reviewed. They've got a big thick policy they don't even know what's in it they haven't had time to look what's in it and they think the consultancy is going to be going through that so it's very important okay that your policy is if you've got five or more that it is recorded broken down into three stages usually the policy statement no legal requirement for it to be signed but the health and safety executive do advise you to sign and it is advisable to sign it because it gives us a person it's more authorized isn't it? if it's signed but you must bring it to the attention of em employees how you do that again is, is up to you if you've got that in a written folder somewhere they're not even going to see it okay but you should bring you've got to bring it to to their intent attention so what about uh, policies not under law then so let's look at things like ISO standards okay or other or other requirements if we look at ISO standards let's talk about ISO 28000 security in the supply chain so this is a best practice standard for security and in here in that in in that in that uh, section wrong clause 42 i believe in that uh, standard it says your policy must be authorized so that is more leaning towards a signature also says other things in there it says that you must the policy must set the framework for your objectives. So then objectives are also going to exist in another area of the clauses. So I'm going to ask to see your objectives for your and your targets and your program. So that when you haven't, when it's not legally mandated, it's in a best practice, it's going to be a harder standard to keep. So we've just talked about ISO standards. We've talked about health and safety policies. If I can think of anything else when I get back to the house, I will... I will screen record it and add it to this video. So remember, policies, stay safe, stay healthy, stay productive. Don't trust it. Test it. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Okay, so preparing the health and safety policy. Let's go on the HSE website. How to prepare it. Let's have a look. How to write your policy. Here's the three areas. Statement of intent. Responsibilities, which is written as organisation within the act itself. And the arrangements 
in the actual legislation, the Health and Safety Work Act, it sits within section 2.3, where it says, as said earlier, you must um, do if every employer to prepare as often as may be appropriate, revise, except in such cases as may be prescribed. That is prescribed here. Okay, also basically, if you have up to four, you don't have to record it. In the management of health and safety work regulations, five, this is the important element I was talking about, the planning, organization, control, monitor, and review of your preventative and protective measures, which people do get prosecuted for. And when you have five more employees, you shall record those arrangements. Here's some breaches under regulation five, some quite hefty fines. What does the policy look like in the flesh? Health and safety policy, intent, responsibilities, arrangements, and we're writing out our arrangements. Signed with the general policy statement of intent. This is the one pager. You'll see sometimes on people's websites or up on the wall. Responsibilities of each sort of element, HR, employees, safety reps, your arrangements for accidents, accidents and its investigation. And then quickly finishing off back to the ISO standard, again, not a legal requirement, but as we flick through quickly to look where that regulation, excuse me, clause, I should say, 4.2 for the policy. Let's quickly have a look what's required for the policy. Nearly there. Security management policy, consistent with other policies, the framework, for setting objectives and targets, consistent the security threat and risk management, management framework, appropriate the threats to the organization and nature and scale of its operations, objectives again, commitment. So you're gonna be needing to evidence if you're getting audited that you are doing what's written in here, what's required, visibly endorsed, that's hopefully gonna be a signature, documented, implemented and maintained. And then on the security risk assessment, which we'll do another video. So I've obviously gone over. I'm no good at timings. I accept that. But I hope you enjoyed the video. One more time. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Stay productive. Don't trust it. Test it. Speak to you next time.